Whether you like it or not, you're now a superhero. Very good. I'm just trying to show you. No, oh, it's I'm done. I'm shown. I did not go to law school to become a vigilante. Our universe is on the edge of a precipice. All right, let's do this. Who the hell are you? That name better not stick. I'm not going to be a superhero. What else you going to do as a Hulk? Lawyer show. Ah! We just started a superhuman law division, and I want the She-Hulk to be the face of it. Ah! We do things by the book. The book of the shanty. The book of American uh, laws. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new She-Hulk trailer. There's a whole bunch of new Daredevil scenes, so we'll break it down. I know you have lots of questions about what's going on with Daredevil in the MCU. Time to get yourself a really good lawyer, and now we have two of them in the MCU. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. It's going to start really soon. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. It's going to be crazy. There's going to be a bunch of cameo scenes, and I'll explain how it connects to everything during my episode Easter egg videos. But just starting with this big daredevil scene first, so he rolls in to the roof of a parking garage riding on the roof of a green Porsche. Obviously big reference to She-Hulk herself because she is this giant green lawyer. And because she's still kind of learning to be a superhero, she's not quite as nimble as other heroes. And they make a joke about how she just kind of turns around and doesn't do anything. She just stands there and she's so strong that the Porsche just wrecks itself on her, stopping it dead in its tracks, doesn't even scratch her. And Daredevil basically recovers by nimbly jumping and flipping through the air, landing in a very Daredevil graceful kind of way. And I love the way they play this scene too, because he kind of turns his ear to face her because that's the way that blind people would normally do it. Like they lead with their ears. They don't lead with their eyes like normal people when they look around to find where something is coming from because he's using his special daredevil ability, his ears to hear where things are coming from. The way they explain Daredevil's special ability though, he's not a mutant or anything like that. He's more like a mutate if you want to get technical about it because he did get his powers during a big chemical spill. Like he wasn't born blind. They dealt with that during like the very first episode of the Daredevil Netflix series. When he loses his sight, his other senses get a little bit stronger, like normal people who are blind. But because this is the Marvel Universe we're talking about, the MCU, like there's this extra level of ability on top of that. His Daredevil sight, seeing the world in red, is like a much greater level of detail of that. Like he senses the world and his brain sort of puts that information together to form these objects in a visual sense. So he kind of interprets things in a visual way, but using auditory cues. That's why his ability is so much stronger than like a normal blind person's. He tried to explain this to Karen Page one time too. She's like, wait a minute, you can see you've been lying this whole time. He's like, well, no, I can't really see. It's kind of like seeing, but it's not the same thing as actually having sight. You see a much better look at the yellow costume. This is made to look like his first comic book costume. So if you don't remember, most people just think of the red costume when they think of Daredevil or they think of the black costume. But originally when Daredevil debuted in the comics for the first time, he wore a version of this yellow costume. They brought it back a couple times throughout the comics. Like normally you see him in the red costume because you think of the Frank Miller run and that's mostly him in the red costume or wearing the classic black costume. But the crazy thing here is that it almost looks exactly like his Daredevil Netflix red costume. Like they try to keep it in continuity as much as possible. So it looks like an evolution of his previous costume that he wore during Daredevil season one and season two. They could also explain that this yellow costume is yellow like this, like it's a new version of the costume because of what happened during Daredevil season three. Like, oh, there was a villain running around in this version of the costume for a long time. So I kind of had to get rid of that costume. I know a lot of you are asking now, does this mean that the events of the Daredevil Netflix series are canon now completely to the MCU? The answer is yes, they're canon, but not 100%. Like some things are canon, but not like every little thing. They'll reference things during the events of the Daredevil Netflix episodes, but he's kind of meant to be a little bit of a reimagining of the character. So it's kind of canon, but not completely canon. The same is true for the Kingpin and all the other Daredevil Netflix and Marvel Netflix characters in general. Like if Luke Cage comes back, if Jessica Jones comes back, same thing with them. The reason why they're doing it that way is just because Kevin Feige and the Marvel people want the freedom to do what they want to with the character to sort of like creatively retune what their costumes look like and keep things in continuity without having to reference every little thing that happened. Like, yes, these are meant to be the same characters, but we're not going to go back and reference like every minute little detail. Because during this scene where they're kind of going at each other a little bit, you see her wearing the new version of her comic book accurate costume. I'm assuming it's happening in some of the later episodes because I think part of the timeline of the show is that she has a version of her origin story with the Bruce Banner version of the Hulk. He sort of teaches her how to use her powers a little bit. And then eventually she goes back to Los Angeles to be this green giant lawyer. 
And then you pick up with the events of the series where you see a lot of the cameos, like you see Wong show up, you see Titania, a lot of the other cameos show up, and eventually Daredevil shows up on a case as Matt Murdock, and then later as Daredevil. And because during a lot of these Disney Plus shows, they give them their comic book accurate costumes towards the end of the series, I'm assuming that the Daredevil episodes will be happening either like later in the episodes, or like he'll show up as Matt Murdock for the first time in earlier episodes, and then later episodes as Daredevil. So I'm assuming this rooftop fight scene that they're having here, or whatever the scene winds up being, is happening in the later episodes. He is supposed to get a new version of his classic red costume when he appears again. I believe that's during the Echo series, and that'll happen next year. And then in the Daredevil Born Again series, which they just confirmed, there'll be 18 episodes of that, he's supposed to get a version of his black costume, but it's going to be the back in black costume. The whole thing with the title, Daredevil Born Again, obviously reminds you of the comic book run, Born Again. They actually adapted part of that comic book story for Daredevil Season 3, and it was just the part of the story where Kingpin does everything he can to tear down Daredevil's life and Mac Murdock's life as a lawyer, like he has two different personas. He tears them both down so that he hits his lowest point and has to sort of work himself out of that hole and rebuild himself as a stronger, more hardcore version of Daredevil. But they're also kind of using the title because he's sort of born again into the MCU, sort of sort of a wink from behind the camera like, haha, we got the character back from Netflix. In a few weeks when they eventually air his episodes, they'll start talking a lot more about the future of Daredevil, all the Netflix characters inside the MCU. So don't worry, there'll be lots of Daredevil stuff happening really soon. There's a couple brand new scenes of She-Hulk going full savage She-Hulk, which is usually what you think of when you think of the green She-Hulk in the comics, when she's not walking around being sort of like the half and half, very controlled Professor Hulk version of her Hulk self. That's one of the differences between She-Hulk and Incredible Hulk in the classic comics, is that usually she always walks around like this, where she's like in this half and half state, where she has the power of her Hulk, but also the mind of Jennifer Walters. The one weakness when they're in this balanced state and it's all versions of the Hulk, like if you're talking about the Bruce Banner Hulk or the Jennifer Walters She-Hulk or any of the other members of the Hulk family, is that they're weaker. When they go into their full Hulk state, like this is what she looks like as full Hulk, they get way stronger, but they become way more mindless, way less controllable. You also notice when she goes full Savage She-Hulk here, just kind of losing it, she's wearing the Led Zeppelin t-shirt. You also see Incredible Hulk Bruce Banner clowning on her during their training montage when he shows her up during that boulder throwing contest by literally launching a boulder into outer space. Like you can see it burning up as it exits the atmosphere. There are a couple other moments where you see her opening up on what looks like the wrecking crew here. Like she kind of loses it, like she seems more zen, but then she loses it a couple times. We get a couple more courtroom scenes with Titania versus She-Hulk. I can't talk about her too much without getting into too many spoilers about what she's actually doing during the series. But a lot of you that have been asking about like particular details about her transformation between Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk, you actually see sort of like a halfway version of a She-Hulk with curly hair, like she's in the middle of her transformation. There were so many weird questions about why she has straight hair when she becomes She-Hulk, but she has curly hair when she's Jennifer Walters. The real reason for that, I think, is just because she looks more like this in the comics, so they wanted her to have straight hair when she's in full She-Hulk form. So when her body's transforming into her Hulk state, it also transforms her hair, which does seem kind of weird, but I guess it's just the way they're explaining it on the show. And all the new scenes of Wong are taking place in the same fight scene inside this magic club. The whole thing with Wong during the series is I believe he shows up because he's actually using her to sue this other magician during the series who's pretending to be a sorcerer. That's also the same magic club where we got the Ghost Rider Easter egg in the previous trailer. Even though it does seem like Wong is becoming the new version of Nick Fury, just crossing over into everybody's Marvel movie and Marvel Disney Plus series, we will see Nick Fury come back during the Secret Invasion series. I think part of the idea though is that like Samuel L. Jackson in real life just practically is getting up there in age and he's getting more and more expensive the more times that they have him in movies. So they're just looking for other options for other big crossover characters to help them connect everything across films. I know everybody would love to see Deadpool become one of those characters too, like him just showing up randomly in everyone else's projects. We might see Deadpool show up in a cameo scene before the actual Deadpool 3 movie is released because it doesn't seem like Deadpool 3 will come out till Marvel Phase 6 in one of these mystery dates here. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the new trailer footage that I didn't mention in the video, just write them below in the comments. All my She-Hulk episodes will start posting in a couple weeks. We don't have to wait that long before we actually get episodes. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss anything. There is a special Guardians of the Galaxy Groot episode that's dropping next week. It's like a one-off with a bunch of shorts. I will also do a video for that. That's going to be like the week before She-Hulk. The week after that is when She-Hulk episode 1 drops. Everyone click here for my She-Hulk World War Hulk video and Thunderbolts connections because it is connected to the Thunderbolts series. And click here for my new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 trailer video and Easter eggs. 
Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.